Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 11 of Lab Padres Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Late night preparations for Booster 7's relocation began in earnest with the placement of the booster transport stand at the launch mount. Next, scaffolding was removed from around the orbital launch mount to clear the transport's path. With everything in place, Booster 7 was lifted off the launch mount and readied for transport. Over at the Cape, SpaceX's recovery ship, Doug, towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea ahead of the launch of Starlink 4-18. Returning to Boca Chica, there was a spill that needed to be cleaned up on the former Starship landing pad. One of the bridge cranes at the Mega Bay was seen lifting a booster load spreader at approximately 3 p.m. Starship 16's nose cone, recently removed from the rest of the ship, was carried to the scrapyard by crane. Early in the morning of the 14th, Booster 7 began its trip back to the build site on Highway 4. Let's watch as it makes its way to Mega Bay, ahead of likely Raptor 2 engine fittings. With its journey complete, Booster 7 was brought into the Mega Bay. Returning to the Cape once again, SpaceX's upcoming launch payloads SES-22 and NILSAT-301 were unloaded from their transport ship at Port Canaveral. Falcon 9's launch of Starlink 4-15 was the first of two Starlink launches this week, lofting another 53 satellites into orbit. A few hours later after its arrival at the Mega Bay, Booster 7 was attached to the bridge crane. Booster 8's liquid oxygen and common dome tank section were moved to the high bay. The booster section was stacked onto the next tank segment within the hour. Caught by the newly upgraded Rover 1 cam rig, the evening of the 15th treated most of North America to a total lunar eclipse. Capping off the lunar eclipse, workers' sparks flew from the launch tower. Construction of the Mega Bay's upper level facilities continued with the installation of a number of large roof panels. Another two panels were lifted later into place as steel work on the bay nears completion. New excavation work is started at the front entrance gate for the launch site for purposes yet unknown. On the 17th, Booster 8's liquid oxygen tank section, stacked two days prior, was welded together on the rotating turntable. The propellant tank sections of Starship 16 were moved out of the Mega Bay shortly afterward and set down behind the tents. Just before 11 a.m., the first of three trailers carrying prefabricated components arrived at the launch site. The first two trailers seemed to have launch mount propellant line shields. The third brought in the back hood for the booster quick disconnect fuel lines, which will protect them from the heat of a launch. The early morning light of the 18th heralded the launch of Starlink 4-18, the second batch of 53 satellites launched on Falcon 9 this week. Returning to Boca Chica, a fourth Mega Bay roof panel was lifted into place later that day. At the build site, construction workers continue to wrap the new Star Factory with insulation and siding. Methane deliveries at the orbital launch tank farm also continued indicating progress towards a future static fire. Later that day at the port, we saw the return of B-1073 following its first ever mission, helping expand access to global high-speed internet. Early the next morning, the booster was transferred to the dock as crews prepared it for transport. At the entrance to the launch site, a front-end loader backfilled what had been previously excavated. A couple of posts were also erected just to the right of the launch site entrance. And finally for this week, Booster 8 got closer to completion as its methane downcomer was installed using High Bay's bridge crane. And there you have it, another action-packed week here at Starbase in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think. 
And don't forget to hit the alert bell to be notified for any upcoming Starbase action. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week. Lab Padre out.